guys, VBI here. I want to stop and say thanks. Thanks for tuning in and checking out whatever the video is about that's about ready to come up next. If you could take a minute and hit subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you enjoy what you've seen here, make sure to hit the like button. We'd greatly appreciate your support. Anyhow, guys, all that aside, let's get on with the show. But just listen. So what we got here is a really, 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 really good fine example of an SB1000 linear amplifier. We got a lot of parts that are floating around on the inside, I can totally tell. Just uh, haven't lifted the tin yet, and it's taking the screws off, and I thought, man, this thing's rattling. Okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. Um It's a single 3500Z. Yeah. Okay. It's got the aftermarket straight from Europe parasitics in it. Which are too big. Hence the reason the parasitics are probably toast. Here that they got a way out of tune. Man, there's a lot of stuff on this side of the box that's kind of scary to me too. So This is a Harbach soft start that somebody has put in here. And a bunch of eyelets and stuff. Now this is one of two boxes for this guy. Um, his other one is a, here it is. Texas Star DX500. So first we're going to do this little 1000, and then we'll do the 500. Before I do anything, i gotta, I got to suck this thing out of the vacuum. And i got to call him. Because there's all little washers and rods and all kinds of crap just chilling. Floating around inside of here. i got to find out what the hell the deal is. It's a very Ameritron ishk for Heath Kit. Oh well, no problem. Let's get started. I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes cleaning this thing out. But this isn't even the reason it's here. So, so far I've found two rods, two lock washers, and a screw floating around free inside of this thing. Now, according to the guy I just spoke to, the guy that owns this thing on the phone, he was tuning the thing up for 10 meters, and when he was loading it for 10 meters, something arced and it won't load up no more at all on 10, 11, or 17 meters. So that tells me that my problem is here. It's in here, which this is a process to take this apart. Um, if it's anything like the Ameritron, there's gonna be a false front. So that means I gotta take these knobs off, 
and then I got to take these little side panels off then I'm going to lay the face down and in here there's a burned up connection because you have an input board which is inside of an enclosure back here and then you have your output section but before I can even get that far I've got to knock the nine pounds worth of uh, back east dust out of this thing so I think we've got to figure out where we need to go and what we need to do They come off in this order. You then take the plate off first, then the band, then the loads. That means we're going to put them on in reverse. And you use a T7 driver, an SDT7C driver, and an SDT8C driver to take off your high voltage current plate, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now, that, that's, that's cute. So T7, T8. Got it. When you go to take the indicators off, be very careful. There's a little tiny black plastic washer that sits just directly behind the thread. There's a screw that goes in here that controls the indicator. Now they're held together with some very sticky glue or uh, grease, which doesn't come off your fingers very well. But you cannot lose that washer. If you lose that washer, the needle indicator won't move properly anymore. This is just like an Ameritron. The front face threads through into the back face. And when we open this up, there's going to be a square access panel here to the front side of the band switch. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull the rest of these screws out. And you got to remember which way these uh, the side panel pieces come off. It's very important because this side will not fit this side. Little, little T joints. See that? So when you lay them out, you want to lay them out accordingly. You've seen this before. Give you just enough slack to be able to do this to lay it down. Now somewhere here in this mess, we're going to find ourselves some burned up connections. It's going to be right there. I have no go in because it can't get past pen switch. All right, hold on. Okay, so we want to index this all the way to the right indexed all the way to the right that's making good connection and that's making good connection so somewhere in here this wire is toast All right, I gotta be where the camera's at. I'll be back when I find it. Well, I see a little bit of an arc over on the 10 meter blocking wire. But that's not enough to give me pause. Now, we have some other issues that I wanna look at first, but <clears throat> first things first, I wanna put the high voltage section back together, which requires me to very carefully lace this rod in here. This rod right here. That's 
got to go right to there. This one in turn has got to go right in here. Now we're in luck, you guys, because this uses a 632 thread, which is something I happen to have quite a few of around here. this a little bit more stable. I don't think we got a good ground. I think there's all kinds of problems going on here. And uh, grab another 632 newt. Two of these. Actually I need three of these. Okay. We'll slide this one in its spot. Now according to the manual, we are currently wired for 110 volts. That's what these two pieces of speaker wire that have been cobbled in there do. Now we're going to run this thing. It's all hooked up for us to run it. But we can't really run it unless we've got some form of reliable meter function. So let's see if we can get everything working again by getting all the right screws in the right spot. So I need one of these. I need myself a star washer. like so. Okay. kinds of problems and none of them are what I thought they were. Let's go down and check this one out. One's loose as well. Let's put another lock washer on this one. out power switch on the front of the amp is on let's see what happens here filament's coming on fan is very slowly turning I've got one indicator light and Power output on the meter face is showing us our high voltage. Tubes lit. Ah, oh, that's weird. Why is the voltage so far off? Should be down here. Should be all the way to the left. Right now it's on power output. One more click. It's power output, or uh, ALC. Power output. 
Should be the far click to the left. Hmm. Well, it's turning on. Filament's lighting up. <clears throat> Soft start's a horrible idea, just for the record. Set it over and over and over and over and over and over again. So. Man, that transformer is buzzing. Or is it the contactor? Transformer. Nope, there's a contactor in the back. It's a frickin' soft start. Let's put it on OPT and key it. Nothing. It's broken. No wonder. Okay, hold on. So we're letting our high voltage bleed off. I look down and I notice this. So this resistor is busted off and the transmit indicator lights broken and the OPT circles back through the transmit indicator light and goes back to the foot pedal <sighs> lame okay let's fix it so if I've got signal there it'll show up present and that screen up there so I got signal going in signal going out and if I very carefully and don't electrocute myself probe there now I got signal going out to the tube so when we look over here at the watt meter right here I have the 5 watt slug in reverse which is or facing forward so we're going to put about a watt in it we're going to get about a half a watt out. There's something seriously wrong on the output side of the tube. That's what we're fighting against. Okay, let's start looking at that. Sticking my love meat beaters in there without I had a little bit of voltage on it. Grounding that out. Okay. Everybody see that? Shift this around so it doesn't do this again. We'll get poop out of it now. Not that the RF can actually leave the tank the tank coil at a resonant spot. What do you think? Well, you know what? Here, let me take the camera off the tripod. I've been getting lazy here lately. So it's this connection on the tank coil that was bad. So I got a 100 watt slug and I got it in 5x. Flip the 5 watt slug back around. It's a thousand watt slug in average. So, let me show you drive. 
remember this is on a 500 watt scale, so we're reading a middle scale, adding a zero. All right, 2025 watts. Let's play with the knobs. Meet 20 watts in is getting us about 400 out. Needless to say, this iMac tube that's in there is good. It's good. It's good. Um, and all the meters are up here in the front working. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to repair the LED and we're going to get the whole face put back together. We're going to finish cleaning it. And then because I have a, a soul and a heart, and I'm going to fix this death trap this floating around soft start horse shit and then I'm going to repair the parasitics so away I go whoop, whoop. okay so I don't have to repeat this all over again we got the face plank back on we're down on 80 meters I gotta re-index this knob um, okay so 80 meters Put about 100 watts in it. Seven hundred out. Working. Okay, so we've tuned this thing out for 40. Once again, about <clears throat> 100 watts of drive makes about 800 watts of power. So, needless to say, we're in good shape. Moving on to 20. Okay, so now we're on the magic band. And let's see here. Step on our pedal. Is working good. Let's go on to 15 slash 17. Okay, so here we are in what 17 or whatever. We're gonna run this through its paces and I'm gonna show you something with the tube. Okay. So check this out. Okay, so what I wanted to show you again from another angle is the tube in resonance versus out of resonance and its ability to cool itself. So right now, let's see where are we here. Let's go here. Okay. So now we can all see that meter over here on the right. Right here. Making about a thousand watts of power. Or no, not a thousand watts. About eight hundred watts, seven hundred and fifty watts. Hello. Hello. I don't even have the radio turned up here. I'm running a radio on eleven volts. Let's turn the voltage up here. Okay. Hello. Hello. One two one two one two one two one two one two one two. Okay, so we're in resonance. One two one two one two. See the difference? We're out of resonance, and the RF power can't come out of the tube. It's got to go somewhere, so it gets turned into what? Heat. So what does that do to the carbon fiber wrap inside the tube? Gets it hot. And what I'm tuning by is a milliamp draw for the grids. Okay, I'm watching my grid current here in the front. One, two, one, two. Yes, sir. So we can sit here and we can talk all day long just like this, and it's not going to hurt nothing. One, two, one, two. All the RF power can leave the amplifier. 
Head oh and two. And we'll just knock it a slide here. Head oh it oh it oh it oh it oh it oh one two one two one two one two. Head oh now put it back in resonance. Head oh one two one two one two one two. Head oh one two one two one two. And we're gonna slowly see the tube start to cool down. Head oh one two. Head oh one two. Head oh one two one two one two one two. I don't, know, I don't know if you guys have ever had the RF deck off anything and actually looked at something operate like that. But in and out of resonance makes a huge difference. That's why you'll hear the old timers say to you all the time, man, the hardest you're ever going to be on the tube is when you're out of resonance. Well, true enough. Proven. Okay, now, like I said, we got to go fix this soft start issue with that board flopping around loose in there. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to change this here. This right here. And make it so that never can happen again. We're going to add some copper to it, a little bit of copper strap. First, we're going to let this tube thoroughly cool off and give it just a minute because we just got this thing hotter than the holy hell. Now, it doesn't normally show up like that when you're running an RF parts tube. It's the bells that heat up. Ding, 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 ding. Little chambers. This is an actual iMac. And it's a fully full output iMac too. Right now, there's some ham guy out there going, oh! Ah, no, stop, unkey. Look, it's not going to hurt it. If I kept running it like that for a month, yeah. That's why I strongly suggest to these guys that run multi-band amps, they do something like this. They mark up the front of their linear, or they have a little piece of cheat note paper that tells them where they need to turn their knobs. Because the hardest you'll ever be on the tube, even if it's only a couple hundred watts out of resonance. Obvious. Gonna move on. As that high voltage bleeds off, I want to talk about something else. I've got one working light bulb in here, this one right here. So I need to replace this one, this one, and this one as well. Fun times, right? And then I gotta build up, let me unplug this thing, and I gotta build up some kind of bracket, or do something to support this other than Velcro. That's just not safe and it's not acceptable. Okay. Make it much easier to see everything. Okay, now to fix that. Ah, don't drop the camera. So I got rid of all this bull crap. Actually created real jumpers and cleaned all this up, wired everything correctly, because it wasn't wired correctly. It was working, but it wasn't wired correctly. Now, me personally, I'd take this out because there is an actual resistor here for this job. But I'm going to leave it in because people like swear by these. Now, I epoxied this in, okay? So I staged it with double side stick tape and then I physically epoxied the thing to the transformer so it cannot come off and hit the cabinet short out and cause any more problems. Now, on this little red wire was this. And I was sitting here looking at this, I was like, man, I know what this is. I was thinking, is this some kind of weird heat shrink or something? No. It's a, a, a finger condom pad. <clears throat> For those that have sensitive little baby soft fingertips, see I'm not I'm not prone to that, my, my hands are made of wood, but this is what they were using as an insulator. I'm keeping that, it's not going back in the amplifier. Okay, so this whole side's right tight, neatened up, looks pretty, put zip ties on things when they needed to be, went through and made sure everything was tight. And if you can remember correctly, this was flopping around pretty good. Now it's nice and solid. It is amazing to me how much this absolutely 100% resembles the inside of an Ameritron. But uh, we're going to flip it around and we're going to make it so the tap that came off <clears throat> on the tank circuit can never come off again. So we're going to do preventative maintenance now. Now that we've got all this taken care of and all that taken care of. So let's flip it around. Okay, so what we did is we took some copper and we wrapped it around the eyelet 
and then proceeded to wrap it back down the wire for the 10 11 meter tab so this can never vibrate get hot melt down come off we've spread the connection surface area out over a significant amount of portion of the wire so it can't back off now what I did before I started testing it I don't remember if I covered this or not but I went ahead and I replaced her old parasitics okay this is coming from being way out of tune all the time underneath high output power that's what causes this so anyhow, you got two brand new parasitic uh, resistor suppressors in here on your straight from Europe horseshoe parasitic and uh, let's hook it up and run it one last time and then I'm going to sign off on this thing for being done and we're going to get on to the Texas Star well, our results may vary depending on the radio that you put into this thing but this is what it is all fixed Hello. I got this thing on 1x, 2x. What's the deal here? What's going on? Oh, 50 watts. Nope. Oh. Well, yeah. let's turn on a couple power supplies and bring batteries up. Oh, that's better. Oh, 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 that's better. Setting us about 90 watts of drive going. I thought 90 watts. I'm hitting it with 50. I'm going, why am I only getting 700 watts out of it? One, two. So about 850, almost 900 watts out of a 3500Z. Now, this tube is for sale. I got a whole stack of these. I got like 10 of these that I got to get rid of. Um, probably 100 and 75 180 bucks for that specific tube fully functional iMac that does not go with this amp that's one of the shop tubes so i'm going to call this done and fully fixed ready to rock and roll now let's switch gears and let's go play with the texas star okay shall return oh Oh. Hmm. All right. Well, this is no good. We are going to do the power wire upgrades to this thing, and we're going to replace these two transistors. DEI 16-2T are the lot numbers. And I think I might have a set or two of these. If not, we're going to have to put HGs in this thing. We'll see. We, uh, we bumped into this here a couple weeks ago, and I thought, well, we're going to go check the bias before we go and put in the new transistors. And sure enough, this 1.8 ohm resistor is smoked. This one back here has been replaced. So, I've changed this one out as well. This one's physically damaged. Don't even bother metering it. Just change it out with a new resistor. All right. Let's pull these pills out. Let's be done with this thing. I'm ready to be done. I don't know about you guys. I'm ready to go. It's always something. It's always, always, always something. So, I don't have any more DEI 16-T2 bullshit transistors. I just don't. Thought I did. Don't. I got 16-1X, 16-1Ts, but not 16-2T. And the reason we have all these different iterations is because of X-Force. And they're constant. Oh no, they're good. Just feed me garbage. I... The DEI transistor um, is a predecessor of the HG. Okay, I don't know if you guys know that or not. But HD components are they're pretty good now. But when they were building underneath the DEI name, they, they did not hold up for shit. I'm here to tell you. Okay, so... I put four new transistors in this thing, repaired the bias circuit, gave it the power wire upgrade, um, got everything installed and put back together the way I want it to be done, where I feel comfortable that the customer is going to get you use out of it. And I got a kid up, and my output transistor is in balance. I'm like, or trans, the output 
resistor on the combiner circuit is in balance. And I went, hmm. So I started digging around. This cap that goes right here on the input is supposed to be a 12 or 1400 puff. Um, that's this little guy right here. It's like reading 8.6 nano henrys. And this one here was reading about 900 puff. Way off. And that explains a lot of what was going on here with this little guy. And the reason that the customer is telling me that this section kept blowing up. This had about 900 puff and this had nanofarad, <laughs> nanohenries on it. So this section was barely turning on and this section was working, but it was so far out of balance from this section, I can't believe nobody caught the fact that the output transformer, I mean the output tra uh, resistor should have been smoking immediately, but here's what it is. Okay, let's wrap this sucker up. I'm gonna let you go so I can get on to doing my thing. 1000 watt slug and peak. I'm gonna put 20 watts of drive on it, 14 volts. Watch this shit. Hello. 600 peak watts. Input reflect. Beautiful. Output meter. Now, because it's got 2879s in it, and it's a straight four pill, we can do this. I have no idea what we're going to get out of this for power. None whatsoever not had a chance to test this yet just got it working i thought man i'm going to slam the video out real quick and be done with this so with all the switches out and the variable knob all the way open it is completely possible to run that into this but normally what we want to do is we want to bypass this variable so then you can hit it strictly with a high drive because if this knob gets turned you're going to burn this knob up Okay, so the knob wide open. I'm going to put out 80 watts of drive into it. About 700 watts. Is what it is. This amp is done. Done, 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 son. It's goddamn ridiculous. My wife just came out here and told me what the shipping quote would be just to get the the Heath get home at 49 pounds, $2,000 worth of insurance. Whew. Oh, oh, cow. Going to New York from Idaho. Damn. Well, Mr. T, you're all done. Your Texas Star is done. Your Heath kit's done. Everything's running perfect. So on that note, I'm going to stop keeping you guys. I appreciate you all tuning in to watch the Little Dog and Pony show that I do. And I'm going to wrap this duck plucker up, and I'm going to get on out the door. It's uh, it's now noon, but of course I came out here and started at 2 or 3 this morning. So I'm off to go do other stuff for the rest of the day. So on that note, I'm going to say, gentlemen, my name is BBI. Without a shadow of a doubt, I am the biggest mud duck in Idaho. Come check us out, www.bbiamps.com. Come can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. A couple more done today, then a couple more done tomorrow, and then a couple more done after that, and pretty soon we'll be able to start taking on orders again, as far as repairs. Not interested in new builds, so hang tough with me, guys. We're working on it one day at a time. Bump, bump from the biggest duck in Idaho. I'll see you. Bye.